Hello listeners at home, you are welcome to the GMAT 41's practical physics class. In this experimental class, I will be putting you through how to carry out the experiment on simple pendulum and our simple harmonic motion. Now, the instruction for this experiment has been drawn from this manual. And this manual is actually used by 100 level UNISIC students, non Zico University students, 100 level. So uh, if you're in 100 level UNISIC, you are going to be given this manual. And so that simply means that what we are going to demonstrate here is pattern in line with the instruction given by your uh, examiners, all right? However, take note that the principle behind the experiment is the same. Even in WIAC, what we're going to demonstrate here is also a likely exam question when you are tried on simple harmonic motion. So what does that mean? That what we're going to do here is relevant to all students, secondary and higher institution, all right, uh, irrespective of your school. To start with, we're going to take a look at the title, the aim, and the apparatus that we need. On the board, you have the title. Let me adjust this. So this is simple pendulum. That's the title of the experiment. Our aim is to determine acceleration due to gravity, small letter g. All right. You may have used a value for rate 9.8 meter per square second, or even 10 meter per square second. Now, what apparatus do we need? We need the simple pendulum. Look at it. Simple pendulum. We need a rated stand. This whole component, iron component, is our rated stand. We need a stopwatch. All right, so this is a stopwatch. I'm going to use, take a look. Although there are different forms of, of a stopwatch. There is one that looks like a table clock as well, too. But this is the one available to me, I'm going to use. You can also use the stopwatch of your phone, you will get the same result. We need a meter rule, this is a meter rule. The purpose of the meter rule is for us to use it and measure different lengths of the pendulum following the instruction, the method we have there, okay? Then of course our thread, this is a thread. Okay, I had to make the thread so long the thread is actually more than 140 centimeter. And the reason is because in the instruction, I'm going to use a length, a pendulum length of 140 during the experiment. So I need something very long. You can see. Good. On the board here, we have the diagram. So this diagram will guide us to know how to set up our apparatus, which I've already done. This is a very simple stuff to set up. I decided to clamp a meter rule here. The diagram here, no meter was clamped because it's of no use. But I just chose to clamp it. I uh, decided to put it in position so that I'll not always be looking for it to measure. Does that make sense, right? Okay, now, having said that, what's the method we are going to use for the experiment? Let's go through that there, please. In the method, we are to suspend the ball by means of the thread. I've suspended it already, but such that the length L is 20 centimeter. So what will I do? It means that I am going to measure a length of 20 centimeter. I've come to the meter rule. Now the meter rule from this top, we have the zero centimeter point. Coming down is increasing down to 100 centimeter. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to adjust this rope, then I am moving this up so that the middle of the pendulum ball will be at 20 cm. And that I've gotten at this point is 20 cm. So this length up to this point is now 20 cm. I would bring it off. So I will suspend that point. Got a 20 cm length. Right, I'll suspend it. Okay. I 
I'm set now for the experiment. We are to measure the time for 20 oscillations of the pendulum and then record the time to be T1. How do we actually do this? For us to measure that time, for 20 oscillations, it means we will set this pendulum to oscillate. Oscillation is a to and fro movement, okay? Just like when you are swinging. Good. Then when we displace it through a small angle, you can see, look at this rope, you pull it through a small angle, not a large angle. So don't go do something like this, and then you leave. Uh -huh. It will be wobbly. Take note of that. It will be wobbly if you do that. So just a small angle. Then you leave and allow it to oscillate. Now once we do that, if I release and it goes this way, I'll count one. It will come back, go again, two. Come back, go again, three. That's what you do. Because as I move this here, this is like a semicircle. Oscillation, we are counting when it turns a complete cycle, one cycle. So, bringing it this way is as if it has covered a semicircle. So, if I release it and it goes, another semicircle. So, the first semicircle, when I pulled it, with the one it went this way, will then give us a complete cycle, one cycle. So, this way, one, come back, again, two, come back, again, three, come back, go again, four, come back, go again, five. That's what we're going to do. Now, why the thing is going and coming? We'll be counting up to 20 oscillation. Once it reaches 20, we are going to stop our stopwatch. Which means, as I put this thing through a small angle here, I will get my stopwatch ready. Once I release it goes, as I'm releasing, I would put on my stopwatch. And then I'll start counting. So are you ready? Let's do this. I've got my stopwatch ready. And now I'm holding the pendulum. I've displaced it through a small angle. I will now release and put on my stopwatch. So let us go. I'm doing that releasing and putting on my stopwatch simultaneously. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so it gave me 18 seconds. That 20 oscillation gave me 18 seconds. I would have to take note of it. For the first experiment, when L is equal to 20 centimeters, T1 is equal to 18 seconds. You can see that, right? Remember that this is just part one of this experiment. I'm demonstrating just how to carry out the experiment. In part two, we'll see how to build up the table. How to set up the table of values, our reading. When we would show of all these things we are asked to read and record in all these lengths, the time, then what we are asked to evaluate, you can see the instruction there as we read on. Okay, now, we are also asked to repeat the experiment and obtain T2. Because the value of that T2 can now get the average time, which is T1 plus T2 all over 2. But whatever you do from now is just a repetition. So we go. Now I'm set. I've displaced through a small angle. I've gotten my stopwatch ready. So remember the rule. As you leave, it goes one, two. And as you're releasing it, you put on your stopwatch at the same time. So I'm ready to do that. Watch on as we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this gave me as 18.2. That's what I have here. So in this case, T2 is equal to 18.2 seconds. So you could see that T1 and T2 I got, there is no significant difference between them. Which means that ordinarily, if I don't want to run T2, because at times we might be choked with time. These are possibility. If I don't want to run T2, 
<laughs> right? I'm not telling you to go and manipulate, <laughs> but that's just the reality. If I am being choked by time, I really don't need to run for T2 since it is the same thing. I can do some plus minus. If the first T1 is 18, uh, the second could still be around 18 point something or 17.9, you know, seconds. So this is simply how we do the experiment. It's, it's a simple one. Now, if you continue, we are asked to repeat this experiment for different lengths. The next one is 40 centimeter, 60 centimeter, 80, down to 140 centimeter. For 40 centimeter, all I need to do, I will bring out this rope on wing 8. I will on wing 8 from this, take it over again and measure 40. So 40 is this point. Good. I've got my 40. Remember, the middle of the pendulum ball should be at that length you are trying to measure. So 40, I'm going to move off this. You can see that I will tie. I will knot this side. 40 cm. 40 cm. And then repeat the same experiment for 20 oscillation, you know, displace a little, get your stopwatch ready, and then you release. You get that right? Okay, let's watch what happens here for 40 cm. I've displaced through small angle. I am now ready. Remember, length is 40 centimeter now, so we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So this gave me 24.56 seconds. So when I have a length of 40 cm, my T1 gave 24. 0.56 seconds. So all you need to do is to still repeat the same experiment again to get T2. The reason is this, look at this. To obtain T average, which is another thing that we're going to show in our table of value, average time is T1 plus T2 divided by 2, just as you take average of something. Okay, so you can still repeat this and it keeps going 1, 2, 3. When you watch your stopwatch, you know that, right? for 20 oscillation. Definitely the value of T2 in this case will still be within this range. Are you getting? To still be within this range, 24.56. So you can just do some plus or minus if you don't want to run the second T2 in a case where you are dealing with time. But anyway, let's just see what this gives to us. We want to get T2 for that. I displace to a small angle, get my stopwatch ready. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Right, so we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I will stop. So this gave me 25 seconds. T2 is equal to 25 seconds. That's what I got here, 25.00 seconds. They usually will report in two decimals because that is time. So that is how we carry out our simple pendulum experiment. We are expected to do this for all those lengths there, then evaluate all the things we are asked to evaluate. Like I said, this is just part one of the experiment, just to show you how you carry out the experiment. Once you know how to carry out the experiment, the problem is solved. Generating the table of value is just one plus one. In part two of this video, right, you're going to see how we would generate this table of value from the experiment. And part three, we'll be dealing with how to plot the graph and evaluate some necessary parameters as the examiner may demand of the students. I hope you enjoyed this practical section. Remember, if you do, contact the GMAS 41. Our contact is here in order to register for our classes. Meanwhile, 
you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Turn on the notification bell so that once you upload a new video, you will be personally informed. Thank you very much. See you next time for part two of this simple pendulum experiment.